Hey guys, welcome to the Fortnite Frights reading vlog. So it's kind of the end of the day on a Sunday the 18th. Yeah, it's five o'clock now. I was on a shopping adventure. We went to Target with the kids and they picked out their Halloween costumes. But I did start reading this morning, which you might've seen a clip of, I'm not sure. I started reading Revenge by Yoko Ogawa. So this is a short story collection that has 11 short stories in it. I read the first two this morning and I don't know if they're all gonna be this way, but the first two were like interconnected stories and they were interesting. I guess on their own um they weren't much but together they were a lot more interesting um yeah definitely a different sort of vibe than what i was thinking um it would be like the first two stories dealt a lot with grief um and they were good they were definitely really well written i just i was expecting a lot darker vibe but we'll see what happens with the rest of the stories i've got nine more to go so i'm just gonna try to finish this one this week just keep reading uh, two or so stories a day of it. And then I started reading The Ballad of Black Tom because I decided to start with this book and I'm loving it so far. I haven't had, I'm on page 59 and it's only 159 pages or 150 pages. So I'm planning on finishing this one tonight. Um, I'm loving it so far. It's really, really good. It takes place in the 1920s in Harlem and we're following um, our main character, uh, Tommy, or Tom, who kind of fronts as a musician, but is more so just hustling people out of money, basically. And he ends up getting this job with this rich, apparently rich white man to come and sing at his house. And when he gets to the house, weird things are happening. I don't really want to say much more than that. I still have a lot more to go and I'm excited to see where the story goes, but I'm loving it. I love the writing. I love the atmosphere. It's so good. So I'm really excited about this one. And then I added another book to my TBR because of course I did. Um, <laughs> and that book is The Night Gardener by Jonathan Oxier. So I heard about this from Tia, from Tia and All the Books. Her September wrap-up, I think it was, she talked about this. It's a middle grade story, but it's a spooky, a, a spooky? <laughs> it's a spooky middle grade. And she said that it was actually really scary for a middle grade story. So that got me really excited. I started listening to the audiobook earlier on this month, but then realized that this would be perfect for the readathon because it does fulfill one of the prompts, um, which is to read a book with a disabled main character or written by a disabled author and there is a disabled main character in here so i'm really looking forward to reading this i'm gonna start the audiobook over from the beginning i think i only got like the first chapter listened to anyway so yeah i'm gonna listen to the audiobook because the audiobook is done really really well so that was the plan for today i finished my two stories in here and now i'm gonna finish this and I'll give you my thoughts once I finish it tonight. I want to start listening to the audiobook for this tonight as well. I also thought it would be really fun to count, to do a page count every day at the end of every day because I, I don't know, I just thought it would be fun. So I'm using the journal that Seiji made and I'm gonna track all the pages that I read. But I guess that's it for now. Today's Sunday and I've kind of been out all day. So I need to wash my hair, it's wash day and what else do I need to do? I think that's it. I need to wash my hair, maybe do a load of laundry, and read. So yes, I'm really excited for this readathon in general. I hope you guys enjoy the vlog, and I will catch up with you once I've finished The Ballad of Black Tom. Tuesday and no it's not it's not Tuesday it's Monday I don't know why I said it's Tuesday it's Monday um, and I ended up reading 241 pages total yesterday so that's pretty good I didn't it didn't feel like I had read that much but I guess I did The Ballad of Black Tom I gave this a five stars and I really don't know how to explain this book because uh, it's so short and there there's like I don't want to give anything away but we're following Charles Thomas Tester or Tommy for short, and he is kind of like this failure of a musician, 
but he he hustles to keep a roof over his head him and his father he lived his father lives with him and he ends up getting the attention of this wealthy white man who wants him to um come and perform at a party that he's having but when he gets there things are really weird <laughs> things are really weird and he ends up like opening up this magic gaining these powers i don't know how to explain it but it's just i really don't want to say much more because it's such a short book and i don't want to spoil anything but it was so good i absolutely loved the atmosphere this is set in 1924 in New York and it just it was so rich with atmosphere the characters were amazing the historical aspects of this novel were really really good um, and I loved uh, Tommy's character I loved how he saw so much beauty in the world around him even though there was so I mean he's a black man living in 1924 in America you can only guess at the things, the shit that he has to put up with. For him and his people and his neighborhood in Harlem, it just felt, he felt so at home and he always saw just this, the positive um, closeness of his community. But like I said, he's a black man living in 1924 and there's only so much that you can take before you can't anymore. And that's all I'm gonna say. It was so good. I gave it a five out of five stars. I loved it and it was an amazing way to start off the readathon. So yeah, I really enjoyed that. And then last night I also started listening to the audiobook for The Night Gardener by Jonathan Oxier. So I made it nine chapters in. So I'm on page 68 and I'm really enjoying this one. It's really fun and really cute so far. So I'm excited to see where this goes. We're following two siblings, Molly and Kip. Molly is 14, Kip is 10, I believe, and he is also disabled. He was born with his uh, left foot inverted, I believe, so he walks with a crutch. And they are orphans? Something happened to their parents, and I don't think like Molly's being completely honest with her brother about what happened to them, but they are parentless and looking for work. This is, um, I don't know exactly when it's set, but it's definitely a historical setting. And they are, they end up getting a job um, as servants in this old manor. And they get there and creepy things are starting to happen. So it's really fun so far. I'm excited to continue with that. This morning I read another story out of Revenge, which was Old Mrs. J. And it, I really liked the story. It got weird. It was like all the stories in here are kind of weird, but this got like creepy real quick. So. Yeah, I enjoyed that story and I like how all of the stories are connected, even if they're not connected by like characters, they're connected in some way. There's some element from the previous story that we see uh, developed on in the next story. So I'm really liking that so far um, and I'm excited to see where this goes. It's, uh, who knows what it's gonna be like because it's been really weird so far and I'm, I'm enjoying that. And then I decided my next read is gonna be Catherine House by Elizabeth Thomas. I'm dying to read this. I know so many people don't like it and I'm just really excited to see like what I'm gonna think of it. Um, but I, j I just started it. I'm only 16 pages in so I really don't have much of much thoughts right now. But um, the main character is Inez and we know from the off that like she's really happy to be at Catherine House because of something that she's done. We don't know what it is yet, but apparently she did something and she's like happy to be at Catherine House for three years to hide out. Because the thing about Catherine House is that you have absolutely no outside communication um, unless you're able to, like they have a point system at the school and you can gain points to like make phone calls to your family or write a letter to your family. But other than that, you're completely cut off from the outside world, you cannot leave for three years. And like I said, I'm only 16 pages in, so I don't really know where this is gonna go, but it's interesting so far, I'm liking the writing. And yeah, I'm excited to see how this goes. I will let you know. I also have the audiobook out for my library in case I want to switch back and forth between the two. But right now I'm enjoying reading it physically. So that's what I'm currently reading. 
these three books. Probably not gonna finish any of these today, but that's fine. But yeah, I'm really happy with everything that I'm reading, so that's good. Okay, so today is Monday, like I said, and on the agenda for today, I need to film a book haul because I acquired quite a number of books uh, for my birthday. So I'm gonna do film my birthday book haul right now and try to get that edited and scheduled. I will get back to you at some point with an update on how I'm doing. <laughs> I just finished The Night Gardener. Um, it is much later on Monday night and I finished it. It was so good. Um, it was so emotional. I cried like hysterically twice. So there was this moment where a certain character, something happened to a certain character and I lost it. And it was such a beautiful moment too at the same time and then i think i mentioned before when i updated you earlier that we know that something happened to molly and kip's parents but we don't know what and we finally found out what happened and that broke my heart and i cried again it was it was so good the author's note was really good as well where he talked about um the inspiration for this story a lot of different works and books um Something Wicked This Way Comes by Ray Bradbury and Peter Pan and a lot of other things and it was just so so sweet. So not only is it spooky and creepy and like the perfect fall middle grade read but it's also very heartfelt. It deals with um, a lot of heavier topics actually. It deals with grief and um, losing your parents and like survivor's guilt and there's just like so many good uh, lessons for kids uh, it was just so heartfelt and beautiful I loved it so much the writing was amazing the humor and the wit and the uh, it was perfect this is a perfect middle grade and I definitely definitely am gonna be picking up more books by this author um, for sure this was so good five out of five stars i am so glad that i read it i wasn't planning on finishing it today but i got to a certain point and just couldn't stop i couldn't put it down i had i like uh started annotating it a little bit there was some beautiful beautiful quotes and it's um it talks about there's a character in here who is a storyteller like that's her profession and it talks about the power of stories and the difference between telling a story and telling a lie it's just amazing if you enjoy middle grade i highly highly recommend that you pick this up and read it it's so so good and i'm still like my eyes are probably yeah i look horrible because I've been crying <laughs> oh my god I love this so so much so that is another book down and I am exhausted it's been a long day so I am about to go take a shower and get myself to bed two five-star books so far for the readathon that is awesome I am so happy um, and then I didn't read any more of this I'm still on page 16 um, but I did uh, listen to a sample of the audiobook to see whether or not I could get along with the narrator and I do like the audiobook so I think I'm going to listen to this on audiobook because um, I, I actually really like the audiobook narrator and I just realized that this is blurbed by Rory Power and it made me more excited when I saw that she blurbed this she said dreamy and brimming with dread Catherine House will swallow you whole which sounds 
perfect. So I'm really excited to get more into Catherine House tomorrow and I will probably pick up another book as well. I think the next book I'm going to pick up is um, The Year of the Witching by Alexis Henderson. So exciting reads for tomorrow. Um, and I literally have no plans tomorrow, like I have nothing going on, um, so I might spend a lot of the day reading. So hopefully we'll get a lot of reading done tomorrow, although the kids might have something to say about that because who knows what they'll get up to. <laughs> Alright, I am going to get ready to go to bed and I will update you in the morning. It is a dark and stormy day. Happy Wednesday. Today is Wednesday. It is my birthday. I turned 33 today and I kind of freaked out about it yesterday, which is why I didn't update you. I spent the entire day crying and just like contemplating my life and I had I had a whole crisis, okay? Everything that I had planned and wanted to do this year and I didn't accomplish any of it. And yeah, I, I just, I really went through it yesterday. <laughs> But I did finish a book. I ended up finishing the entirety of Catherine House by Elizabeth Thomas. And I have to say, this was not a great book to read while I was going through my whole little crisis because it was just very dark and very creepy. It was atmospheric. It was a lot of good things. But the main character, Inej, is probably one of the most uniquely interesting characters that I've ever read from. She's just very like indifferent and empty inside <laughs> and because I was feeling those things already and because I'm such an empathetic reader it was just difficult reading this book while I was also like having a breakdown. So <laughs> yeah um but I enjoyed it. I gave this a four out of five stars and I don't, did I talk about this with you guys? I can't remember anything that happened this week, but I think I mentioned that this takes place in a school called Catherine House. It's a uh, school for uh, higher learning, a college type place. And you are, you have to dedicate three years, summers included, to Catherine House. There's no leaving once you get there. You can't contact your family even though they claim you can, but then they make it impossible for you to. No outside media, no um, no internet, no 
phones, no um, music. This also takes place in the late 90s, which I've never heard anyone mention, but it does take place in the late 90s. I started to wonder when uh, they were talking about cassettes and I'm like, what? And then we saw the date and it was 1996 and I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Um, so yeah, I've never heard anyone mention that, but it, it does take place in the late 90s, which is cool. But our main character, Inez, goes to the school, and we kind of find out early on in the story that Inez is kind of hiding something, or she's running from something, and Catherine House is, she's so happy to be at Catherine House because she's able to escape her past and, and, uh, what's going on with her in the outside world. Um, and Catherine House is really the only home that Inez has ever known, and yet she spends her entire first year, because we go through all three years at Catherine House in this book, she spends almost her entire first year at Catherine House being mostly drunk, sleeping with everyone, and skipping out on her classes, like not doing any of the work, um, which eventually gets her into trouble, but yeah, but this is the the kind of main character we're following. We know that she she has dealt with some kind of trauma. We, we don't find out about it um, until later on. But she is starting to discover that things in the house are not what they seem, that Catherine House might be hiding something, uh, some weird, oh no, I can't say that. Um, Catherine House has an agenda, let's say that. And she is slowly, slowly finding out what it is. And I, like I said, I really enjoyed this. I gave it four stars. It is so weird and different from anything else I've ever read. Um, a lot of people complained about this being plotless and I, I wouldn't necessarily agree. There is a plot, although it's a very in dis, um, it, what's the word I'm looking for? Indis, indiscernible? Like you don't really know what it is until you get to the end. You have to like complete this book to understand it. And even then, there's still a lot of questions and stuff, and it's very vague. That's that's another word. It's very vague as to what's going on. Even when you do get the answers, it's still very vague. So I know that not a lot of people won't like that. But I really enjoyed this for what it was. I think it, the atmosphere was so, so good. It was dark. I think you could refer to this as like dark academia. Um, and I enjoyed my time. I, I really did. I gave it a four out of five stars. And... I don't recommend it. <laughs> I can't recommend this because I don't feel like this is a kind of a book that is going to be widely appreciated. I think that there's a very select few will, that will appreciate this and like it's darkness, it's twisted humor, it's, um, it's almost meandering at some points and I'm not gonna lie, there were times where I was uh, getting a little bored throughout because it's a lot of the same and it's a monotonous um, and it's kind of tedious to read. I am so sorry if you can hear my kids yelling in the background. It's lunchtime and I, I can't do anything about that. So sorry. Um, I just realized that they've been yelling this whole time and like I've just been trying to ignore it. Um, anyway, yeah, very interesting can't really recommend it to a lot of people but i enjoyed my time we broke our five star streak unfortunately but a four star is still amazing so three days into the readathon i completed three books which is awesome i don't think that that momentum is going to continue um especially not the way i'm feeling today after finishing catherine house it was so dark and heavy that i needed something a little bit more lighter i was originally going to pick up uh, the Year of the Witching next, but I decided that I just needed a break. Like, my, my brain needs a break <laughs> from heaviness. Um, so I decided to pick up Cemetery Boys, which you might have seen in a clip this morning. Um, I didn't get very far into it. I just read the first two chapters, which is, um, I'm up to page 41 now, and I'm really enjoying this. I'm loving the main character, Yadriel, already. Um, this follows Yadriel who is a transgender boy, and he is having a hard time with his very large um, Latinx family accepting who he is and his gender. They're all uh, brujas and brujos. They're very strict in their traditions. And brujas are, uh, have like healing magic, and brujos have the ability to um, like call spirits 
forth and also to send spirits on into the afterlife. And our main character Yadriel has never been good at healing magic and he wants to prove that he's a true brujo but they haven't let him do his ceremony to um, gain to gain his magical abilities. So he goes off in secret to perform the ritual and he believes that he's been accepted and then um, I don't think it's a spoiler to say that his cousin dies because I think it mentions in the synopsis that he, he wants to raise the spirit of his cousin. So the part that I read up to is the part where his cousin died who was very young and they don't really know what's happening to him. They're kind of trying to go find his body right now. So that's where I'm up to. I'm enjoying it so far. I like the voice of the main character. I like the authorial voice. I'm enjoying it so far. Good morning. It is Thursday and after updating you yesterday morning, I did absolutely no more reading. Um, as I've probably mentioned like a hundred times already, yesterday was my birthday. Um, I didn't really do much. My mother-in-law did make me cake, so I had cake, which was nice. And then I hung out with the kids. And I watched Beauty and the Beast, the uh, live action remake, which is one of my favorite movies ever. Got one of my migraines yesterday, so that um, was mostly why I just couldn't focus on reading. I need to film a video, so I think that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna film my book haul and then um, try to read. I don't know. Welcome to Friday. Am I wearing the same sweatshirt that I wore yesterday? Why yes. Yes I am because it's comfy and I love it. <laughs> so we knew that at some point this week my reading was just gonna dip, right? We're, we're in the dip right now. I'm starting to feel a little bit slumpy which is horrible. I'm just not in the mood for a lot of the books that I have been picking up. But I did read and complete a whole book yesterday. It was a comic but still, it counts. I actually read Victor Laval's Destroyer um, because one of the prompts on the bingo board is to read a horror comic. So this is a Frankenstein-inspired retelling, sort of. Dr. Frankenstein was a real person and cr created a monster, and the monster 200 years later is still alive and uh, causing some Havoc. But we're following a uh, black woman who is a doctor, Dr. Baker, and she, her 12-year-old uh, son was shot and killed by police. So she decides to take a page out of Dr. Frankenstein's book and bring her son back to life. And it was so, so good. I give it five stars. I absolutely love this. I need to get a physical copy of it because it was, the art is really good, beautiful as well. But this reminded me a lot of um, the Ballad of Black Tom because in The Ballad of Black Tom, Tom's character reminded me a lot of Dr. Baker because they're both um, just trying to live their lives and something tragic happens to them, both of them. They lose someone very close to them because of the shitty world that we live in and they've just, just like are fed up. They're fed up and they want to burn the world down and they maybe take things a little too far. The this Frankenstein inspired story really reminded me of this little book and I love you know I loved this. I love Destroyer as well. I am now uh, 141 pages into Cemetery Boys. This is really cute and like funny and it's enjoyable. I'm enjoying my time. I'm just not um, I'm not in love with it and I don't really feel like I'm in the mood for such a sweet, cutesy, upbeat story, which is weird because the whole reason I picked this up was because I thought I needed something light and fun like this. But apparently not. So now I don't really know what to do. Like, should I put this on hold and pick up The Year of the Witching? I'll get to the end of the chapter, uh, to the end of a chapter in this, and then just like put the book down and scroll on my phone. And I'm just getting very distracted while reading this. And it's not because it's not good, because it is. And I'm just like really enjoying all the Latinx culture and the food. Oh my goodness, the food. <laughs> Making me so hungry. I'm just not, I just don't think I'm in the mood for it.
guys so it's saturday it is the last day of the first week of fortnite frights this week has been interesting to say the least I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up the vlog here and i will do another vlog for the second week of fortnite frights which will hopefully go a little bit better although this one went pretty well too it's just that i find myself kind of in a reading slump and i just don't feel like reading it's only like four o'clock on Saturday, but I know that I probably won't get any more reading done. I'm just not in the mood to read. That is absolutely fine. <laughs> I'm really excited about the books that I have lined up for next week. The only thing I'm really upset about is The Year of the Witching. Um, I should have read this book this week because the live show for it is gonna be tomorrow. And I really wanted to catch that live show. Alexis Henderson herself is going to be a part of the live show. So I really wanted to uh, you know be a part of that but let's go over what i did read and what i'm currently in the middle of so the first book that i finished this week was the ballad of black tom which i gave five out of five stars i absolutely loved this and i'm so excited to read more of victor laval's work the next book i read was the night gardener which was once again a five star for me spooky middle grade Honestly, you can't go wrong with Spooky Middle Grade. They're just so much fun, but this one was so well written, so beautiful, so heartfelt. Then the third book I read, and the book that is probably responsible for my reading slump, is Catherine House by Elizabeth Thomas. This was such a unique read for me. Just the experience I had while reading this book was so... <sighs> It was good, but it was so off-putting at the same time. Definitely a great debut, a great gothic, dark academia read, and I enjoyed it. I gave it a four out of five stars. And then the fourth book I finished this week was Victor Laval's Destroyer graphic novel, which I gave a five out of five stars. Absolutely love it. I need to get my hands on a physical copy of it at some point because I just, I wanna have it in person and look at it and reread it. It was so, so good. I highly recommend if you're looking for a graphic novel a horror graphic novel or horror comic it is perfect i also managed to uh do complete four challenges on the bingo board so the first one a piece of dark fantasy a horror comic a gothic novel by poc and a disabled main character so four challenges down four books down is not bad at all for the first week of Fortnite Frights, in my opinion, so I'm pretty happy about that. As far as my as uh, tracking my page count, which I told you I was doing, um, of course I don't have a completed page count for today. I don't know if I'm going to read anymore. Probably not. On the first day, I read 214 pages, or 241 pages, which was amazing. The second day, I read 404 pages which is insane. On Tuesday, 220 pages. Wednesday, which was my birthday, I only read 40 pages. Uh, Thursday, I read 216 pages. And on Friday, I read 239 pages, which <laughs> if you see my little like map here, I only put up to 175 because I didn't think I'd read more pages than that. Um, as for the books that I'm in the middle of, we've got Revenge by Yoko Ogawa. Now I wanted to have finished this by today. I am on page 77 of this, so I'm about halfway through. I did read a short story today, which is the best story in the uh, book so far, in my opinion, which is Sewing for the Heart. It was so good. It was creepy. It was it was really good so yeah the stories are really picking up in here each one gets better and better so i will be continuing with that next week and then as far as cemetery boys which i had really wanted to finish <laughs> sooner um i'm on page 205 so i'm about 60 percent of the way through this so that's not bad i'm hoping to read some more of it tonight i'm still enjoying my time with it like i said i don't know that this was the best book to pick up at this particular point because it's so it's like fun and upbeat and cutesy and i'm just <laughs> not in the mood <laughs> but it's such a good story too starting the good house by tanana reeve do i do have the audiobook for it so i've been listening to the audiobook and reading along when i can and i made it up to page 114 which is chapter eight and i'm really enjoying this i can tell that it's going to be a rather long-winded one though which is fine i'm really enjoying all the detail that's put into it the writing is impeccable atmosphere is pretty good so far 
So I'm excited to see where this goes. But that is where I am with everything that I've read. That's everything I've completed. That is the first week of Fortnite Frights. All in all, not bad. And I really think that next week will be better. Hopefully I'll be in a better reading mood and a better mood overall. But yeah, that was the first week. I have no idea what this vlog looks like. I have not started editing it at all. I don't know how short it was or how long it was. I have no idea. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, please give it a thumbs up if you would like. And I will catch you in next week's vlog. I'm sure I'll have a video going up between this vlog and the next vlog. So I'll see you in that one, whatever it is. <laughs> Talk to me in the comments. I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.